Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 Elden Ring weapons video. In today's video I'm going to be exploring the what I consider the best 10 weapons in Elden Ring. And we're going to start with number 10, which is Rogier's Rapier. Now this item you can get from Rogier uh, after he moves to the round table hold. And you can get it pretty early on in the game. And the great thing is it's already upgraded to level 8, I believe. So I usually end up using this weapon to kill Renala uh, with most of my characters. Uh, you can pop uh, Poison Ash on it so that you can do poison damage. So I, I usually do that for Renala. But then later you can always just put a different Ash on it. I usually end up putting uh, the Sacred Ash on it so that... It's a uh, weapon almost any character can use. Even a mage can use it if you pop on the Dexterity Talisman and get the plus 5 Dexterity. Because um, they start with 12 and you need 17 to use it. So a lot of characters can use it if you kind of tinker with your stats. So you can put poison on it. If you're a mage, you can put the magic damage on it, which is something else I like to do with my mages to make it scale with intelligence. So you can make it poison, you can make it sacred blade, you can make it scale with magic. So it's a pretty versatile weapon. And that's what I would consider number 10. Um, its moveset is pretty standard. Yeah, R1, and then... So in this game, a lot of times, just being fast is a huge benefit. Rapiers are kind of a nice weapon to use in this type of a game. Alright, let's head on to number 9, which is another rapier, and it's going to be the Ant Spear Rapier. Now this thing is also a really good Renala killer. Um, it has automatically has Scarlet Rot on it, which is amazing. And then you can put an Ash on it as well, so you can put Poison Ash on it, which I have done. Um, so not only are you going to get the Scarlet Rot uh, status, you're also going to get the Poison status. Um, another one that you can also put Sacred on so that you can kill Undead. Um, if you put a Poison Mist on this and use it on Renala, she will go down fast because not only will she have Scarlet Rot, but she'll have Poison. Um, although it doesn't really have many applications outside of that uh, status effects, so that's why it's number 9 and it's not higher. Alright, let's go on to number 8, which is Bolt of Grand Sax. Now this bad boy is kind of odd with the stat requirements. Um, takes 40 dex and 20 strength, so not every character is going to be able to use this. Um, but it is a lightning damage weapon, and um, in my best spells video I'm going to go over how I think um, Lightning Spear is one of the best spells in the game. And this actually, the weapon art, is sort of like a version of Lightning Spear that you can cast. So even if you're not a mage, now you have Lightning Spear, which I consider one of the best weapon, uh, spells in the game. And of course you can always just poke things with it. This is the R1, this is the R2. So as you can see, these enemies are going down pretty fast with the Bolt of Grand Sax. That is my number 8. Alright, well now let's talk about the number 7 best weapon in Elden Ring, is Marika's Hammer. Now you might think this should be higher on the list, but there's a reason why. Um, so let's look at it. It takes fairly easy stats to get. 20 strength, 12 dex, and 19 faith. But the Ash of War is just insanely good. Might be one of the best. But you can't get this until you beat the boss of the game, so that's why it's kind of low for me. But just look at this insane Ash of War. It is so powerful and so useful for, for crowd control. Um, so I definitely say this, that's the R1. And then let's see if I can show you the R2. The R2 is that. So this weapon is definitely a plus for a faith build, or if you just have the faith to use it. Marika's Hammer. You cannot go wrong with this weapon. Alright, so let's talk about number six. The number six weapon is the Halo Scythe. Now this little bad boy takes 13 strength, 16 dex, and 15 faith, which is not bad, but you can get it early on in the game too, so... If you come over to, 
let's find it in here. Where is it? Kaled Swamp. And just kind of farm in this area, you can find um, the Clean Rot Knights. And if you kill them, they'll not only drop their armor, which is pretty good as well, but you can get this Halo Scythe. Now this weapon is insanely good for faith builds. Um, Mikola's Ring of Light, so that's the Ash. And you can just kind of spam this like crazy. Um, it's really good on bosses. The only thing my character usually did was run out of stamina, so you may want to put into some dark so you can get a couple swings down. Now that I'm higher level, I can, but when I was low level, I didn't really invest. And you can see this thing just murders enemies. Uh, it's especially good on bosses. And so just get your faith high, because it scales with faith. Those spells do, and... Oh, shit, I'm out of magic. The R1 attack is like this, which is alright. And what's the R2? The R2 attack is that. So, kind of. Oof. Let's go back to using the Ash. You'll really enjoy this one. If you, I basically made this character for this weapon. Alright, well, that's number six. Alright, so now we're going to talk about number five. The number five favorite weapon is the Hand of Millennia. Now this bad boy is very hard to get. You have to beat Millennia, which you may be in game to do, and you need 48 decks to use it, so... I don't know if most characters will even bother with this, but if you have a dex build, definitely go ahead and grab this. Um, if you remember the horrible Ash of War that Millennia uses on it, you is called Waterfowl Dance. And this thing is freaking awesome. This Ash of War is insanely good. So if you have a dex build, I would definitely recommend getting this. And it's very powerful on bosses. And... Whoa. <laughs> that almost sucked. Odds oh, R1. What's the R2? Just an overhead chop. So... Oh, shoot. <laughs> so that is number five. Let's move on to number four, which is the Envoy Horns. This little bad boy is so good. I didn't even. I just got it just to check it out, but it does holy damage. It only takes 16 faith to use, so. And there's a, there's a giant version too, but we're just gonna go over this. So if you put on the, the Sacred Scorpion Charm, which raises your holy attack, and go ahead and pop on the Envoy Crown, which raises the potency of bubble-based skills. So there, and we also have, you know, we can just put on the one that raises faith. And now we got faith scaling bubbles. This is actually really good on the Beastmen in Crumbling Free Missoula that tend to be kind of difficult, but all you have to do is just boop. And these bubbles are kind of homing. They're extremely powerful. I I wanted to try to kill Millennia with it, actually, but I wasn't able to, unfortunately. But just look at this. They're highly accurate. They're homing. I mean, this weapon is absurd. So yeah, if you decide to use it, get this Envoy Crown. And there is a another version that takes a little bit more uh, strength. I think it's also good. I haven't really experimented with that. Uh, but basically, you can get this in the capital. The little guys look have this similar look to them, uh, the envoys. Uh, or you can get it in Mikola's Halleck Tree. But you'll probably want to get it before that. If that's the kind of build you want to go for. Now let's talk about number three. The Rivers of Blood. If you are struggling with Millennia, I would recommend getting this weapon. It, the Corpse Piler, Ash of War, is going to decimate her first phase. And this weapon, just overall in general, is pretty good. So, let me show you what that looks like. Even with enemies that have shields, this can often go through it. I honestly thought this build was going to be my best character just because of this weapon. But unfortunately, you can't get it until I'm on top of the Giants. So it's kind of a late game weapon. Um, I mean, you can try to get there as fast as possible, but it's still kind of annoying that you have to beat the malformed uh, Dragon Knight guarding the capital, which I had trouble doing without my 
character's main weapon, so. Here's the R2, and the R1. Katanas in general are pretty good, but this is definitely one of my favorites. Alright, now we're getting to the good stuff. Let's go over the number two ranked weapon, which is the Sword of Night and Flame. This thing is incredible. So you get it in the Carrion Manor, it's kind of hidden, but you can get it really early on. And it only takes 12 strength, 12 dex, 24 int, and 24 faith. So I, rec I would say this is one of the best builds of strength, intelligence, uh, a strength, what am I saying? No, an intelligence faith build. So you'll have access to all the best faith spells and intelligence spells, and you'll have this weapon, which is insanely good. Uh, so basically, you can cast Comet Azure with your freaking weapon. So you just hold down uh, the Ash of War button, and then you push R1. And that this is just absurdly good. Unfortunately, it doesn't. There's still situations where normal magic is better, like the Elden Beast and stuff. But maybe you could beat it with that. Now, there's also another thing, though. It's not just common as you You do if you push um, R2, you can do a very powerful flame attack. This is insanely good. I, I can't even say how good that is because. It is really good on enemies that are weak to fire. It has a decent range, as you can tell. And then if you need to, you can just zippity zap. Comment as you go. Let's see if we get this guy that's coming for me. It, it's, it feels like it casts faster than Comet as you too, which is my big disappointment with that spell. So this is definitely one of my favorite weapons, and I would definitely recommend making a build all around it. You'll get the best of all the spells in the game, as well as this really incredible weapon. Alright y'all, well now it's time for my number one favorite weapon in Elden Ring, which is the Watchdog Staff. Now it only takes 34 strength and 10 dex. It's got incredibly low requirements. And you can get it really early on. I would recommend getting it as soon as you can. Um, you can actually get it in Lernia of the Lakes in this little dungeon right here. It's called Roads in Catacombs. It's behind a hidden wall early on in the dungeon. You don't even have to beat the boss of the dungeon to get it. And this is just absurd. This is the best weapon in the game for sure, as far as versatility goes. So it has this really powerful Ash of War. Now keep in mind, this is a strength character. Let me show you my stats. Um, my character is 62 strength, 22 dex, no intelligence, no faith, no arcane. So this is a purely strength, so you don't have to waste points on intelligence or faith to get the most out of this weapon. It scales with the weapon level, so get it to level 10 as soon as possible. And this weapon art is insane. Not only are they, they kind of homing these little things, but the range is really good. Let me see if I can show you. You can beat Radon with this. You can literally beat almost every boss in the game easily with this. And because you don't have to waste stuff on intelligence or faith, you can pump into your endurance as much as you want. So you'll have the stamina to basically spam the spell over and over. You'll be able to wear the best armor in the game. Um, I've beaten pretty much every boss with this weapon. You don't even need other weapons. I even beat Millennia with this thing, <laughs> which is hard to believe, because I thought you had to do a River of Blood build just to beat her every time. But... This is definitely the best weapon if you're going for versatility in this game. PV, you know, PVM, of course. I don't know about PVP, but this is the only weapon you would ever need to pretty much beat the whole game. So you can get it early on, just get it to level 10. And as you can see, this character has other weapons that I made, but I literally never use them, except for Giza's Wheel, because I, I, I use that to beat the Black Knight Tishy with... Uh, that seemed a little bit better moveset than this one, but yeah, so that's my ranking, top 10 weapons in Elden Ring. If you're ever struggling with the game, I would re definitely recommend getting this Watchdog Staff, because it'll just make the game so easy. Like, let's just see if I can show you the range. <laughs> oh god, it's incredible. Radon, I beat Radon faster with this than I did even with my powerful mages or clerics, so... It's ridiculous. Trust me, you'll love this weapon. Thanks for checking out my video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And we'll see you on the other side.